Previously on Livingstone, split up into two groups, four couples start their adventure with a long hike through the Makadi Caddy salt pans. So what? Both groups manage to locate their chest, one with food and one with gear. All right, we got fire. Oh, two matches. Yeah. To their disappointment, it's anything but excessive. One egg! One egg! Oh. That's fine if that was just for me, but we have ten of us and we have Brad. For Brad and Sarah, the lack of food and the primitive lifestyle in the Botswana wilderness isn't quite what they expected. And on just the second day, they both decide to go home. I can't yeah. believe it. Bye. 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 The others face off in the first challenge. Liz and Ryan win and are guaranteed a continuation of their adventure. Haley and Dean lose, and that puts them on the elimination bench. The third person on the elimination bench is the one not chosen by the winners. This time, it's Teresa. All three pick a stone, two black ones and one white one. Whoever picks the white stone will be separated from his or her lover and stay behind in exile. Can you open your hand? Haley is the first one to pick the white stone, but she's granted exemption. Due to the early departure of Brad and Sarah, you will rejoin the group as normal. <laughs> the journey continues, with four couples intact and 14 more days to come. Day four in the African wilderness. The four remaining couples get ready for their next trek. Their mission is simple and urgent. They have to find food. You know, everybody was waiting for trek day to go to our next destination and see something new. The only concern was energy levels are real low and we still have to make it to our destinations and our points. So we just, we're almost like on autopilot right now, I feel. So we didn't have any food last night, and then we woke up this morning without food, and then we set off for a massive hike without food. For some reason, I think my stomach's just got over the fact that it's not getting fed. By playing rock, paper, scissor, they decide who will walk in which group. Ola and James join Wade and Teresa, while Liz and Ryan hook up with Haley and Dean. Both groups have to navigate with a compass, map and GPS. But in the African wilderness, that can be quite a challenge. The scenery today was a lot different from yesterday. It was a lot more dense. There was a lot more spiky shrubbery, which liked to hurt you. Oh, the thorns wonderful. And that made it more difficult because you were constantly having to go off your degree. Yeah, yeah there's a, quite a clear track here. Keep your eyes open for animals too. But you're still walking through Africa on foot, so it's still good. <laughs> Following the shock exit of Brad and Sarah, our four couples continue on their journey. They set off on foot to find food, supplies, and the next camp. And as weakened as she is, Teresa pushes every boundary possible just to keep up with the rest of them. Water break. 
You're not feeling sick, are you? A little bit. Mm. I just, just give me a couple minutes. Mm. I knew I didn't have that much energy, so I did slow my pace down, and I was trying to just, you know, walk. It's not like we were moving very fast. It was, I just did not have the energy. You all right, babe? All right as I will be, I guess. But I kept pushing myself because there's other people with me and we're trying to get to our destination. <coughs> yeah, I'm useless right now, I'll just follow. Keep looking around though. They're gonna hide it under a tree or something, probably. An hour after they left camp, Liz and Haley's group are no longer sure if they're heading in the right direction. No, what we could do is a binocular check on your bearing, Haley. Do you think? Yeah, definitely. With Haley as the group's navigator, Liz can't help herself. She just has to interfere. Do you want to give me a line and I'll. Do you want to give me a line, Haley, and I'll try and this way out ahead? No. Not a line. Okay. Haley and. Dean, I find them a little bit exhausting. I don't know, I feel like I, I handed over to them, but I wasn't sure if I could completely trust their judgment. Um, so I was a little bit more on edge or walk. If you can give me a better line, please do. Or don't. I honestly don't know if it's that they're not as considerate or they're more headstrong, or if I'm just so irritable, but I didn't enjoy the company during the walk at all. Man, it's hot out here. Oh, ho, ho, I see a chest. Do you? Yeah, just under that tree. Yay, we, we made, made it. it. Good job, team. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo Come to baby. So proud right. of us today. Cutlery, I was Oh, right. man, yeah. how can we always get the cutlery? Hey, we still have a match from last time, how too, the huh? fuck mm -hmm. are we going to carry this shit? I'll, put, I'll carry some pants because I've got empty hands. It's going to be heavy. I got empty hands, too. You did the reading from right there through this. So we found the chest, and Teresa started to kind of get a little bit sick and spew up, which she's been doing most of the trip, so we just figured, you know, it'll be fine. You can walk it off. Ready? Steady cook. OK. <gasps> Teresa started telling me that she was feeling dizzy and her head was throbbing. So I told her to sit down in the shade and I said, oh honey, you sure you want to keep going? She said, let me try. So we tried. I got to get her out. I got to get her out. She kept vomiting and vomiting and vomiting and she pretty much fell to the ground. And I'm calling medic, honey. I asked our guide to call for, for a medic. <laughs> and so I picked her up, put her in the shade. Then she just passed out. Teresa! 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 Stay with me. So you can do a pull here for you. Breathe in your nose. Very strong, all right? I hope she's gonna be here in a minute, all right? Just hold on, all right? Felt like forever because she passed out. We were like, she stopped breathing for a bit. Good girl, just keep breathing, keep breathing, keep that pattern, okay? And her eyelids started twitching and her hands started shaking. I picked her up and put her on my shoulder and ran her the 300 or 400 meters out to the road. How far are we going? But doing the Heisman through trees with this heat, you know, I just, just took it out of me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just get her to safety, okay? Good, just let it all out. Yeah. It all out. <sighs> the group with Haley, Dean, Liz, and Ryan have no clue about Teresa's condition and are happy to find the chest with food. We got the chest. <laughs> we went on a complete tangent off in the other direction for probably about 40 minutes when we was literally a few meters away from the chest. So that was horrible to think of in hindsight. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah. Yay, oh, not a much. And you open it up and it's like, oh, 
We have this between eight people. Can you just give us one potato each, please? <laughs> that we got flour, salt, oil, so we're hoping we can make bread. That would be great. What is that? We have to open it. Oh, uh, should we? It's gonna be meat. No, uh, yeah, maybe. It is meat. Yeah, is it's it? got blood. Yeah. Let's keep it. Let's keep yeah, it. Keep it secure. Oh. Happy at the moment. I'm excited for uh, for what we got for dinner today. Big piece of beef. So very excited for that. Alki, the salt and the eggs. Okay, goodbye, Jess. <laughs> well, she's not. I'm not gonna. She can't stay. She was so sick. I was crying because, like, how can someone just be like that? It took a long time for her just to just breathe. <laughs> the doctor obviously said he wanted to, to look at her a little more closely, so I got in the truck with her. To calm Teresa down, the medic gives her an IV that immediately seems to have effect, but she needs to be observed for a while longer before she can continue the hike. Do you want me here? Or if not, I'm going to finish the trek. I kind of want you to stay here, honey. All right, your call. I'm here. Yeah, stay with okay. her. Please. I'll be right here. Please, be sorry. sorry I had to abandon no. you. We'll be right. We'll be right. We got this. Ola has an experienced compass She is. She's, she's picking it up. We kind of planned on Wade being quite a good navigator, but as soon as those two got taken out, all of a sudden you've got two people who don't know how to navigate with lots of heavy equipment. So it'll be interesting to find out how we are because at home it's impossible to work out with her because as soon as she struggles, she gives up. Where is that stupid All right, train? babe, and then there was two. I know. Dropping like flies by the day. It's crazy. So it was, it made the hike a lot more interesting, that's for sure. It wasn't just a nice couple's stroll through Africa. Hey. Oh, fuck yeah. And while the dark clouds are gathering, Liz, Ryan, Haley, and Dean approach the new camp. Yeah. Almost at the same time as Wade, who has been dropped off by the medical team that are still monitoring Teresa's health. Yeah. She passed out while we were hiking today. Oh, for fuck's sake. She, she all right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they had her stabilized and everything here. Yeah. So. Is she's... it just like tide, dehydration, tiredness kind of thing? And all yeah, the, all but no, no gas. You know, she doesn't have no. enough body fat, no. so. Yeah. She's doing good now. They put an IV in her and all that okay. out there. Okay. Yeah. So. That's yeah. good. Yeah. They just want to observe her for a little bit longer. Yeah, of course. So where are the other two? Uh, they're on their way. All right, let's stop here. We were really relying on Wade, weren't we, to do the GPSE. We got lost along the way. Um, I think when Teresa, you know, went down, we were pushed offside to different navigation, and we just continued on with the compass. But that led us to the wrong way. I think it's that tree down there. Yeah, we have to be close. We hope so anyway. Otherwise, we're going to be spending the night here. On top of their exhausting hike, Olar and James experience another downpour with those who are already in camp. It slowly wears everyone out. If we don't dry, I'm going to be freezing. Everything's wet. I'm so hungry. <laughs> when we finally got to the end today, I should have felt relief. That's when the rain hit and everything we owned just got soaking wet and I was absolutely freezing and I was I just needed a break. Like we've walked for six hours at least on half an hour. Yeah. And we didn't have dinner. Instead of getting to the end and being able to relax, like we're even more uncomfortable. This is not fun anymore. <laughs> wow. 
Welcome to Africa. Oh man, Orla and James will be getting fucking pelted. You wanna walk in this? Babe. Huh? Let's get walking. I wanna prove everybody wrong. Um, everyone thinks that, oh, you're a model, you're weak. Um, that's what everybody thinks, and it's just a stereotype that needs to be broken. So I'm trying not to just do it for James, not do it for my family, but do it for everybody that thinks that I'm going to fail. The medical team finally discharged Teresa. She is surprisingly alive and kicking. Oh, Hi. Hey. 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 What happened? Wiped out. Completely wiped out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm just exhausted. I just am wiped out. I just had no res no reserves. So they yeah. put me on another drip. Yeah. And had to get me filled up again. So. And hearing that she's been put on IV and brought back to 100% health kind of just made me feel so flat and deflated because I have to go on a challenge against her tomorrow. And even though she's been sick, she's back to 100%. But I feel like I'm still sitting on five. So I'm pretty jealous right now. Guys are even We're a bit worried about James and Ola, they're still not here yet. Yeah, yeah. I should have been okay. here. That massive branch down there, that's where we're going to follow. We were soaking wet and had no idea where the hell we were. So we got the GPS, otherwise God knows where we would be right now. And then we did our call that we usually do, which is cooey. And um, as soon as I said that, I could hear Liz doing it, and then that was the happiest moment for us. We're high! <laughs> we made it! Yeah, I'm proud that she lasted the whole hike. The navigation skills were, I'd say, mediocre, but the dedication was good, so I was pleasantly surprised. I think she only shows us half of what she's made of. I think she's got a bit left in the tank. But now you're found. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel better, so I can relieve you. <laughs> we saw Teresa and she came running up to us and oh my God, what the hell? How is that even possible? You, know, you look a million bucks. Yeah. yeah. Amazing, I was so happy because I was worried the whole way, you know, what could happen to her and she was completely fine. So it wasn't fair that I know you're sick, you're sick, but we're fucking pushing ourselves too. And the hour ago she's on the ground and now she's carrying the tent. But that's what an IV will do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Shit. Back. Hey. Well done. Good stuff, mate. So, uh, so only used the GPS 20 times? 19, <laughs> actually. <laughs> no, really, though, how many times did you use it? Three. And oh. We're none of us are good at GPS and we just hoped that our. Uh, <laughs> Man, she looks so good. She was like, she was I cannot like her eyes describe. Back and everything, it was so scary and just shaking. She was shaking. Like so her much. eyes like disappeared, and she's like. And she like just went out blank for like ages, and we're like, oh my god. She looks so good now. Teresa's miraculous recovery, together with the rain and the lack of food, make everybody feel miserable. And while putting up their tents, Ryan and Wade suddenly lose their temper about tent pegs. Okay, hey, mate. I don't care whether you care. Because you keep going, oh, we've got six pegs. Because someone keeps asking about it. And eight. I carried your pegs for you. Yeah. To say thank oh, you. Oh, did you? I thought you got Ryan. in the fucking car. Hey. Ryan, yeah. Ryan, stop. Stop. Mate, we've stop. had a problem. We've had to walk the whole way. Stop, Ryan. Is there a problem? Yeah, there is. Go. Go for what? Ryan. Mate. Get on your fucking horse. Hey, Ryan, calm down, okay? Stop. Calm down. You're really showing your true colors, man. Fucking wanker. Stop. Stop. Be a big person. Come on. It's the heat. It's being tired. It's being hungry. Um, you know, in that situation, little things are always going to set people up. I did go and apologize, and Wade apologized as well. I think we both sort of snapped at each other, and um, I just wanted them to know that it wasn't meant to be a personal attack, that it was just that we all felt disadvantaged because of that IV drip. 
they got into a bit of a fight over pegs, seriously, who gets over a fight over pegs. So, after everyone apologised, life in the camp takes its normal course. That is to say, with one big difference. There is a little bit of food to share. You just hand it out. Yeah, I don't really care. Look, we're in it, you know. Oh, ha, ha. I've hit a low. Is it good? It's good. It's really, really good. But I'm hoping, like, if I can just sleep it off, maybe tomorrow I'll wake up better. Because I feel like the real Africa is still to come. There's still more for me to see, and I can't go home before seeing that. It's the morning of day five, a few hours before the second challenge. While everyone is preparing, Teresa sits by herself, sad. I just feel emotional. I'm just gonna take it easy because I feel like I'm putting too much pressure on myself. Okay, so don't do that. We'll try another track, and if, it's, if, if, if that starts happening again, I'm not going to let you get to that point. You, like, run circles around me, and I just, like, am I playing my part? Well, am is, I doing, like, I know, it but... It doesn't matter. It means team. nothing. Exactly. And on a team, there's always someone that's stronger at one thing and weaker at another thing. I just don't like being the weak link. You're not. What I lack in heart, you make up for. Come on, let's have fun. The old one's a little bit bigger than the other. Five days in the African wilderness can really take its toll. Four couples stripped of their complete creature comforts and taken all the way back to basics. This can affect a lot of emotions, but will it affect their memory? We're about to find out in the next challenge. So when we arrived for the challenge, there was a massive tree up and it was beautiful. As a kid, I loved to climb trees, so I was just looking at it thinking, geez, I'd love to get up and, and, and climb that tree. Approaching 3,000 years old, I mean, that's, that's crazy, that's BC. It's phenomenal, yeah, it's really beautiful. It's like petrified already, it's like, uh, like rock something so unique it just gives you that spurt of excitement and energy and then when I saw Chris I knew immediately this is this is going to be a brain teaser this is going to be a mental challenge well guys welcome to elimination game number two the winning couple will progress through to stage three the losing couple will find themselves on elimination bench Ryan and Liz you won game number one which means you are exempt from losing this However, should you win this, you do sit on the bench of winners and you take the first person through with you. So it's well worth trying to win. On this board, there are the footprints of 12 different animals. I immediately assumed it's gonna be some kind of puzzle. That was a comforting thought because none of us had the energy, all our muscles are sore. After the game explanation, you will be given two minutes to memorize this board. In the chest in front of you, you have all 12 footprints, minus the names. I will call out a series of animals' footprints. You have to put them in the exact order I call them out to you. The first couple to make a mistake are the losing couple. The last couple standing are the winners. Everybody understand the rules? Yep. Do you have two minutes to memorize this whole board? Your two minutes starts now. I said to James, all right, I'm going to learn the top part and you're going to learn the bottom part and that's it. I would memorise all 12 prints and the names. And I was to just listen to what Chris's order was. I kept getting so confused. 
with the zebra and the giraffe because when I think of a giraffe, I think of a round foot that you forget they've got like the two prints underneath. And so I kept seeing the zebra and seeing the roundness and thinking, oh, giraffes have round feet. I've seen them in the zoo. Like, <laughs> So those two kept throwing me. I knew some of them, but I, I guess I was not familiar with everything. Like, I, I don't know what a, a spring bike is, so I couldn't even place him. You know, I really just need to study up on some more animals before I come to Africa. <laughs> remaining. It was only six animals and I got it like I just associated something with something and something and something. Like the giraffe puzzle was orange so I thought giraffes are orange so it just makes it easier. So yeah I was pretty confident with the challenge that we had to do. So we had ostrich dick because it looked like uh, it was ostrich and it looked like a penis and a ball. So that was the one to remember that. Then we had buffalo seas red because it was on a red background and buffaloes can get angry. Hello Hippo, because it looked like a hand, so we say Hello Hippo. We had Lucky Rhino, because Rhino kind of looked like a three-leaf clover and was on a green background. So it was just things like that, it was associating it with things. OK, first round, I will call out a list of animals' names. When I have finished and I tell you, you can open the cupboards and put them in order. The animals are... Elephant, zebra, ostrich. Off you go. First round of the challenge, and it was quite an easy one. Uh, it was only three footprints. Springbrook. It's going to be one of these two, I think. What are we looking for? Oh no, this is zebra. Pretty sure, right? Zebra, zebra. Yeah. It was only in my head for this long because I could just feel my energy level going. I'm like, hurry up, hurry up. Dang, it's gone. <laughs> Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Stand behind your cupboards. Yeah, we. 100% knew it, knew that there was no doubts in our head that we'd got it wrong, we just knew that it was right. <laughs> the first one, elephant. Okay, your first pick is correct. Second selection, zebra. That is correct. And thirdly, ostrich, also correct. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> but with three animals, this was just a warm-up. Each successive round, one more footprint will be added. The animals are... Hippo. Lion. Giraffe. Zebra. Off you go. All the animals that Chris had said were the ones that I had learnt, and I remember the correct order, so I was like, yep, easy as. Zebra. That's buffalo, so it's got one of those two. I think it's this one. Normally, I, you know, I have a really good memory with things, but I think just because of where I'm at physically, I'm drained. It just wasn't there. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, guys. And again, I would say that we were 100% on it. We didn't have any doubts or anything with that one. First one, hippo. All correct. Second animal, lion. All correct. Third animal. Giraffe. All correct. Fourth animal. Zebra. Well, guys, we have our first situation. Three similar answers. One is different. 
I was actually surprised that someone was out in that round because I thought it was pretty easy. So I was like, oh my God, who is it going to be? Ola? Correct. Ryan and Liz? Correct. Teresa and Wade, unfortunately, that was the wrong choice, which means you will now go to the elimination bench. Everybody knows a zebra has a hoof print, you know, and I'm like, what? I thought I'd go out on, like, the little springbok thing that I don't know. <laughs> That's springbok. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Close your cupboard and take a step back. It was just such a bit of relief for me and Dean just to know that we weren't going to be last again. Round three. Your animals are... Hyena. Impala. Rhino. Buffalo. An elephant. Off you go. I thought we're going to be good at this game. We did, just going off the past two runs, it was just quite easy for us. So I thought, yeah, we're going to be good. But then you never know how good the others are. I had to remember the first three, and Ryan had to remember the next couple. And I doubted that he might remember them, so I listened to the first three, but I also kind of listened to a couple of the others, and I had a blank on the second one. Fuck, I forgot to find Jojo. Rhino. Um, so when Chris had said the list of animals, none of them were mine, so I expected James to remember all of them. And then, yeah, he only put four blocks up, and I'm like, wait, wasn't there five animals that he had listed? And then he was like, was there? And we were like, oh, my God, how can you forget this? Rhino. Rhino, which one's Rhino? Five. What's Rhino? What's Rhino? Four. Three. Two. One. Step behind your cupboards, please. Luckily, it came back to me. Guys, could you drop your guarded block? First animal, hyena, all three correct. Second animal, impala, two answers the same, one different. Liz and Ryan, correct. Haley and Dean, correct. Ola and James. Unfortunately, that was the wrong choice. Or you had one job to do. You even came up with that tactic. Could you replace your discs, close your cupboard, and take a step back? He always blames me for everything, and now it's actually his fault. I make one mistake a year, and it just happened to be today in the challenge. But uh, that won't happen again. After James and Ola had left, me and Dean definitely started thinking, yeah, there's definitely a chance we can do this. But again, you don't know how strong Liz and Ryan are going to be because Ryan is a private investigator, so he has to do all memory and things like that. Two couples left. The winner's chair beckons for one of you couples. Haley's told me she's got like this, she's had a photographic memory since she was 12 years old, so I knew she'd be tough competition. But um, I felt like going into it that we, we were like, OK, we, we could have this, we've got this. Third animal, rhino, correct. Fourth animal was a buffalo, correct. Finally, elephant, correct. Yeah, I remember three. Yep, I will, babe. Round four. Giraffe, hyena, impala, lion, wildebeest, ostrich. Off you go.
giraffe, hyena, impala, lion, ostrich. Five, four, Go. Put it again. Put it three, two, one. The beast, one. Step behind, please. Oh. Guys, can you drop your guard? Two different answers. Hmm. I fucked up. I put giraffe there. That's okay, babe. We didn't, Two separate we didn't answers. Have them at the end anyway. Who do you think got it correct? We're out. Confidence. <laughs> the first animal of round number four was, in fact, a giraffe. Started at the bottom. Now we're here, as Drake would say. <laughs> but yeah, we got it, and it was unbelievable my animal and my mistake, the one that cost us the challenge. I got the giraffe and zebra, poor print, confused. You just snooze, you lose, I missed it. Hayley Dean, congratulations. You won the channel, that means you will be sit on the winner's bench and you will choose the first person to go through to stage three with you both. You may now head back to camp and I'll see you all this evening. At the previous elimination, Haley and Dean ended up on the elimination bench because they lost the first challenge. They were joined by Teresa, who wasn't chosen by the others to progress to the next stage. After all three picked stones, Haley was left with the white one. She would have been left in exile, but because Brad and Sarah quit, she was exempt. <laughs> to not let Liz and Ryan's victory go unrewarded, they will be exempt from sitting on the elimination bench, so they are safe as well. So win, lose or draw, you will go to stage three. That will be your reward. Back in camp, life seems to take its daily course. All right, straight on the scout, Finley. Oh, well, it's all the way down to there, like. Oh boy. Without fire, you don't eat. Without fire, you don't eat. So, fire and water, the basics of life. There's still a little bit of flames in there. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, it's good. Because it's the last night all four couples will be together, Ola insists on an Australian bake-off. Today's cooking show, how to make bread at Ola's kitchen. <laughs> all right, so first we need the flour. We got first, which is amazing. However, we have to choose someone to be put onto the elim elimination panel with Teresa and Wade. And obviously Liz and Ryan, they're exempt from being nominated. So it was literally just between Ola and James. Ola doesn't do the dark yeah. on her own. So to put Ola in or even put Ola near the chance of going in would just be horrible. Sucks that we have to choose one of the two, but mm. I just couldn't. I couldn't. I won't be able to see Ola's face if she pulls the white stone. Just she will be scared. Yeah. Like she will just be gutted. So yeah, that's fair, isn't it? Yeah. We was like, yep, yeah, cool. We thought that's that's easiest option. We don't even have to, you know, think of tactics or anything like that. We have to keep Ola because it's not fair on her. Instead of dreading his last night with Teresa. Wade looks for an opportunity to save her. Teresa and I talked about some possible scenarios and uh, given the current situation, um, that it would be a blessing for her to, to get the white stone. Think about it, if you get rest and get out of a trek, you'll have time to acclimate to this weather, this elevation. You might come out spry. Yeah. And I'm confident I'll get you out sooner or later. Yep. The one thing I want you to promise me, if I end up with the white stone on that trek, if you start getting dizzy, I will. That's it. I, I won't will. be. I won't be there to, to 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 pull you out. So you got to pull yourself out. If it is my time to go out there without you, that's God saying that I need to stand on my own two feet and learn how to make decisions on my own. You that's know, it, it's going to still be a challenge. That way, I'll still have my baby when I get out of exile. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. <laughs> I'm looking forward to a juicy leaf. Trying to break me out of exile early, though. Don't don't quit until you're dizzy, baby, or hurting. But okay? see, nobody's been to exile, and I like to be. Sometimes I like getting the scoop on things. I kind of want to uh -huh. go. 
What if exile is like something really cool? You get three square meals a day. Yeah, but what if it's not? For the first time, one couple will be separated. It's time to find out who will be left behind all alone in exile. Guys, welcome to the second elimination. Let's start with the winners, Haley and Dean. Congratulations, great effort in game number two. That has now earned you a seat on the winner's bench. Please, take that seat. Ryan and Liz, because of your great efforts in game one and the early departure of Brad and Sarah, you also earn your right on the winner's seat. Please take your seat behind these two. Wade and Teresa, unfortunately your efforts fell short in the last game which earns you a seat on the elimination bench. Take your seat. Dean, Haley, before we get to you choosing your next person to go through, I want to tell you that the exile that is going to be left behind will not be left alone. You will share your camp, your food, and your tent with another couple that arrive tomorrow morning. What? Like, what? How? Like, how is this even possible? Holy crap. I did not see that coming. Kieran and Nina will arrive in the early end. Their base will be the exile camp. They will live there, they will eat there, and they will share everything that you have there. Unless one of you decides to quit the main game. Then, either Kieran or Nina will join in the main game and compete against everybody else. Is that clear? Oh my God, it's crazy. The thought of two new people coming into camp, fresh, probably just had a buffet breakfast, all their energy intact, their mental state intact after everything we've been through. It just, it was a bit of a slap in the face. Dean, Haley, did you make your choice who you're taking through? Yes. Does this change it? No, it doesn't change it. <laughs> um, oh, actually, think about it. So there was a change now, so obviously if I was gonna go into exile with the new couple being in exile, then I wouldn't be alone. So I want to be the one that went to exile. Don't want to go, what is it? So, no, our reason doesn't be understood. Oh my God, this is awful now. <laughs> Can we have like two seconds? <laughs> Don't keep us waiting, guys. <laughs> sorry, sorry. But our, ex our reason doesn't, isn't applicable anymore. Well then, change it then. But we don't have another reason. Yeah. So if what we change, was that reason? So the re the original way we were going to do it is to keep Ola because we knew that Ola would not be able to sleep on her own in the dark. I can do it. Huh? Honestly, it's not an issue. Do it, honestly. I'm not going to quit Haley. Like, I'm not. Okay. So. We'll keep Ola. Yeah, we'll keep you. Ola. We'll oh, keep um, Ola. you're keeping me or not, not taking me? No, we're keeping you. That's Why? We, we thought that's what you just <laughs> said you wanted. <laughs> we thought that's what you were saying. No, I said to Ola, and put me in exile. Oh, we thought you was meaning to... How am I gonna take get him out? <laughs> I think they um, thought about that. You can't tell me that Haley and Dean didn't discuss the fact that Ola would struggle to get James out. Unless a challenge that really suits her comes up, she's probably not gonna be able to win me back. So I think it was a pretty obvious ploy. Okay, Ola, do you wanna take your seat? Even though she knew there'd be a couple in exile and I wouldn't be alone. She still chose me sitting next to her on the bench. So it was definitely a ploy um, against us to try and get us out of the game.
Three stones, two dark, one light. Just take that and hold it face down for me, please, Wade. Teresa? James. Okay, guys, just to keep everything clear, the person picking the white stone will be left behind tomorrow. Wade, will you turn your wrist for me, please? On my countdown, I would like you to open your hand outstretched. Three, two, one. That's a dark stone. Wade, you are safe. Teresa, will you turn your wrist for me, please? On my countdown, could you open your hand? Three, two, one. James, can you turn yours? And open. Okay, Teresa, you picked the light stone, which means, unfortunately, you will be left behind in exile camp and you will join Kieran and Nina early in the morning. Here is your tent. She didn't necessarily like the idea of being separated out here, uh, but in the bottom of her heart, she knew that without that rest, uh, there's a good chance that her health would have caused uh, an early demise. You know, isolation for me is a time to ground myself and, and to re, re, recalibrate just me. You know, it's a time for me to kind of balance myself out again and get some me time. Haley Dean, your maps for your onward journey tomorrow. Okay. Teresa Wade, enjoy what could be your final night together in the African wilderness. You may now head back to camp. For Wade and Teresa, from now on, Livingstone will be a different game. But the same goes for Ola and James, who think they've exposed the enemy. Yeah, I think now we just know, you know, what they're all about. Oh my God, that's crazy. <laughs> Morning, sorry. A lot of my friends at home tell me, Kieran, you can be an absolute asshole. And that's fine. We've never had any disruption at this camp. Into your mouth but it's just here. you. Why no. is your law correct? Well, then go Tell away. Me. Go away. I'm here. I can't well, go away. Deal with it.